Today I am going to give you a lecture on uh, some problem related to vector spaces. The very first problem is show that the system consisting of single non-zero vector is always linearly independent. Show that the system consisting of single non-zero vector single non-zero vector is always linearly independent. As we know that in order to show that the set of vectors are linearly independent, first of all we consider a number of scalar according to the number of vectors and all scalars belongs to our field F. So let us consider a single scalar because in our case our system consists of single non-zero vector. So let system S consists of single non-zero vector alpha we choose a scalar A which belongs to our field F this F is the field of our vector space Vf and this A is any scalar belongs to our field F now we put the vector alpha with the linear combination with scalar A equal to 0 F this is a linear combination of vector alpha which is a non-zero vector with the scalar A belongs to F is equal to 0 bar. The 0 bar is a vector 0 quantity and from here we conclude that this A is equal to scalar 0 because we already assume our vector is a non-zero vector. So this alpha being a non-zero vector, the product of two quantity is zero, uh, zero vector and if our vector alpha itself is non-zero then this is this clearly implies that the scalar must be zero and when we get all scalars are zero clearly the set of vectors become linearly independent but our system consists of just single non-zero vector alpha so and because our scalar is zero so this implies system S is linearly independent is linearly independent because scalar is equal to 0 that's why S is linearly independent next question show that the mapping T from V to R to V three R defined as T of A comma B is equal to a plus b comma a minus b comma b is a linear transformation is a linear transformation from vector space v to r to v three r. and find the range rank 
नल स्पेस एंड नलिटी ऑफ लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन जी शो दैट यू मेपिन टी विच इज मेड फ्रॉम वैक्टर स्पेस वी टू आर टू वैक्टर स्पेस वी थ्री आर वेल वी टू आर रिप्रेजेंट द वैक्टर स्पेस विथ डायमेंशन टू एंड वी थ्री आर रिप्रेजेंट द वैक्टर स्पेस विथ डायमेंशन थ्री In order to prove T is a linear transformation from vector space V to R to V three R, we first satisfy the uh, required property for linear transformation. And here T is defined as T of a comma b. Means if you operate T over a two-dimensional vector a comma b, it produces a plus b comma a minus b comma b. For this type of mapping T, we have to show that this T is a linear transformation from V to R to V three R. And then thereafter we prove uh, find the range, rank, null space, and nullity for this linear transformation T. So let us consider a vector space V to R. This is our two-dimensional vector space, and this is third three-dimensional vector space V three R, having a R as a field, and this field is common to both V two and V three R. If we consider a two-dimensional vector a comma b, which is a member of V to R, and if we operate T, because T is mapping from V two to V three, that T is a mapping defined from vector space V two to vector space V three, and this two-dimensional vector a comma b is any member of V to R. The resulting three-dimensional vector will be a plus b. Comma a minus b comma b. In order to prove T is a linear transformation, first of all we operate T over a alpha plus b beta, and where alpha and beta we consider as an arbitrary vectors for v to r. So let us consider alpha and beta are any two arbitrary vectors which belongs to our two-dimensional vector space v to r. Let alpha is a one comma b one, and our beta is suppose a two comma b two. Let alpha comma beta are any two members of v two r. Then clearly alpha is given by a one comma b one, which is a two dimensional vector, and beta is given by A two comma B two. Now we consider two scalars A and B belongs to R. Let us consider two scalars A and B which belongs to field R. Then. Start with the assumption that 
when we obtain t over the element of v2r which is a alpha plus b beta further for alpha we have a1 comma b1 so we write a1 comma b1 for beta we have a2 comma b2 so we simply substitute the value of our vector alpha and beta which is a1 b1 and a2 b2 instead of alpha and beta in this expression now further we multiply scalar a and b with the vector a1 comma b1 and a2 comma b2 so become a a1 comma a b1 plus b a2 comma b b2 
finally we observe T of A alpha plus B beta is equal to A times of T alpha plus B times of T beta. Hence, this is the required condition for linear transformation which is satisfied by our given mapping T. So, thus T is a linear transformation T is a linear transformation from vector space V2R2 V3R So as T is a linear transformation from vector space V2R2 V3R Range space 
of t. So clearly, t of one zero and t of zero one generates our range space R t. Now, in order to prove these two vectors are basis vector of R t. First, we prove these two vectors are linearly independent. As soon as we prove these two vectors t times of one zero and t times of zero one are linearly independent, and because they generate our range space, so these two vectors become a basis vector, and they form a basis for our range space R t. So, in order to prove linearly independent. We just consider two scalars which belongs to, uh, for example, x and y. These are the two scalars which belongs to our field R. Now, now in order to prove one one zero and one minus one one are linearly independent, we consider two scalars x and y belongs to our field R. We put linear combination of these two vector with these two scalar one one zero and y one minus one and one is equal to zero vector. So this is linear combination of these two vector. For these two vector, we consider two scalar x and y, which belongs to our field R, and we put their linear combination is equal to zero. We just introduce the scalar inside the vector gives us x x and zero y. Minus y and y is equal to zero vector. See, this zero vector can also be written as zero zero zero. Finally, we add both the vectors. The addition, you know how to add two vectors. So we just put the initial elements first, like x plus y, comma x minus y, the second ordinates of both the vectors, and finally we add the third ordinates, which is zero and y. So it's finally y. So after adding these two vector. They compose a single uh, three-dimensional vector, and which is equal to our zero vector. And by equality of two vectors, two vectors are said to be equal or same, even only if their all ordinates are identical or same. So, with this assumption, this x plus y must be equal to zero. So we put x plus y is equal to zero. Again, x minus y is equal to zero. At the third ordinate, so y equal to zero. And clearly, because Y is equal to zero. If we put y equal to zero in this equation, we get x equal to zero. So from here we conclude both the scalars x and y, both the scalars are zero. And whenever we choose uh, two scalars for two vector and we put them uh, in a linear combination equal to zero vector, and if we conclude with all scalars are zero, then such vectors are linearly independent. So hence. One one zero and one minus one are linearly independent vectors, and as the, these two uh, vectors generate our uh, range space R t, as well as they are linearly independent, so they they form a basis for R t for our range space. And dimension of dimension of R t is equal to number of element in the basis of R t. As we know that dimension of vector space is given by number of element in its basis. So clearly, dimension of our range space R t is equal to the number of element in the basis of R t. And we have two elements in the basis of R t, so clearly dimension of R t becomes two, and which is our ring basically. This is our ring because dimension of R t is usually known as rank, while dimension of our null space N t is known as nullity. Now. 
In order to determine nullity of uh, vacuous space V to R, we use the Sylvester's law of nullity. Sylvester's law of nullity. According to the Sylvester's law of nullity, we have rank of t plus nullity of t is equal to dimension of v to r. According to Sylvester's law, Sylvester's law of nullity, we have rank of t plus nullity of t is equal to dimension of v to r. And rank of t is clearly 2, which we obtained in the previous step. And dimension of v to r is already given in the question, so it's a two dimensional, so we'll place 2. And with the help of this Sylvester's law of nullity, finally we get nullity 2 minus 2, which is 0. Is dimension of null space and t is equal to 0. And this shows that this null space of our V2R is clearly a 0 subspace of V2R. The 0 space of 0 subspace of V2R constructs our null space because dimension of nt is 0. So This. this zeros of the space of V to R form a null space of V to R. Otherwise if we choose, let us consider suppose some other vector belongs to our null space. For example, some a comma b belongs to our null space and d. We'll see what happened if we choose a vector a comma b which belongs to our uh, null space and d. So according to definition of null space, if you operate t over a comma b it is always zero vector because we assume a comma b a two dimensional vector belongs to nt and according to the definition of nt according to definition of null space uh, all those vectors of v2 are belongs to nt whose t image is equal to zero vector of our v3r so by using that assumption t of a comma b is equal to zero vector now we obtain the same rule of t a plus b a minus b and finally b is equal to 0 which is a three dimensional vector and after simplification we will observe because these two vectors are identical only if their ordinates are same means a plus b 0 a minus b 0 and b is equal to 0 and from here we conclude all three scalars a uh, b and c a and b both are 0 all, all, all the scalars a and b become 0 0 so this implies is only a single vector which belongs to our null space and that is zero vector only. Hence, only zero vector belongs to null space. So, zero subspace is our null space in this case. So we'll find all the things like uh, RT, which is our range space, and null space, dimension of uh, null space that is nullity, which is zero, and uh, rank, which is dimension of RT, we obtain two, and we show that these are linear transformations. Now we come to the next problem. Consider the basis as 
consist of three vectors alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3 of R cube. This is a three dimensional vector space over a real field and where alpha wind is given by 1, 1, 1 the second basis vector alpha 2 is given by 1, 1, 0 and the third vector is 1, 0, 0 now here we have to express 2, minus 3 and 5 this is one of the vector in terms of in terms of the basis vectors in terms of the basis vectors alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3 and it is also given in the question that t is a mapping which is made from r cube to r square from 3 dimensional vector space to 2 dimensional vector space we defined as t of alpha 1 is 1 0 t of alpha 2 is equal to 2 minus 1 and t of alpha 3 is equal to 4 comma 3 and we also find uh, t times of 2 minus 3 5 now in this question consider the basis s having a 3 vectors basis vector alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 of 3 dimensional vector space r cube which possesses r which is a set of real number as a split and these three factors, basis factor are given by 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 and 0 and the total alpha 3 which is a basis factor 1, 0, 0 and first, in the first part of this question we prove this factor 2 minus 3, 5 can be expressed as a linear combination of these three basis factor alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3 and secondly, according to the given making t which is made from 3 dimensional vector space to 2 dimensional vector space where t of alpha 1 is already given 1 0 which is a 2 dimensional vector because its range set is 2 dimensional and uh, the domain set consists of 3 dimensional vector space so t alpha 1 is given as 1 0 t alpha 2 is given by 2 minus 1 and t alpha 3 is given by 4 comma 3 and then we determine the t image of this particular vector 2 minus 3 and 5 so first of all we express our this given factor 2 minus 3 5 in terms of its basis factor. So let us consider let the vector 2 minus 3 5 is equal to a times of alpha 1 plus b times of alpha 2 plus c times of alpha 3 and where a, b and c are any three scalars belongs to our field R. Now, now we assign the value of alpha 1 which is already given 1 1 1 the value for alpha 2 is 1 1 0 so we put 1 1 0 and value of alpha 3 which is 1 0 0 and further we introduce because we know how to multiply scalar to the vector so we just introduce scalar quantity inside the vector so k into 1 gives us a, a to 1 gives us a and b, b and 0 b into, b into 1, b and b into 1, b and b into 0, 0 and final c, 0 and 0 now, now we have the, all three vectors lying on the right hand side so it will be a plus b plus c this is the first ordinate of single vector which is which we obtain by adding all these three vectors a plus b the third ordinate is again 0 and finally find a so this is again three dimensional vector which we obtain by adding these three given uh, uh, three dimensional vectors and because by equality of by equality of two vectors two, two vectors are said to be identical or same when their ordinates are identical it means the first ordinate like this a plus b plus c which is the first ordinate of our vector on the right hand side must be equal to 2 a plus b equal to minus of 3 and a is equal to 5 so from this expression we get 
three equations a plus b plus c equal to t two a plus b equal to minus three and a is equal to five. Now we find the values of a b c where a is clearly five. In order to determine b value, we simply put the value of a or substitute the value of a which is five in this equation. So it will be five plus b is equal to minus three, which gives us b equal to minus of eight, minus of five and minus three gives us minus eight. And when we assign all the values of a and b in the first equation, which is five plus minus of eight plus c equal to two, and from here we obtain the value of 2 minus 5 and plus 8 again we find 8 plus 2 10 minus 5 5 so in this manner we determine all three unknown values of scalars a b and c so now we can easily express our vector this 2 minus 3 5 in terms of alpha 1 alpha 2 and alpha 3 now we get a linear combination of these three vectors So we put the value of a, which is five, a equal to five, yeah, five times of alpha one, plus the value of b, which we obtain is minus of eight, so minus eight times of alpha two, and value of c is five, so we replace c with five, finally with five times of alpha three. So this, is, so we finally express our factor two minus three five as a in terms of alpha one, alpha two, alpha three. Which is the desired first part of our question, and now in order to prove second part, in second part we have to find t times of two comma minus three comma five. Means we have to find t image of this particular vector two minus three five. And if we apply t image on both sides of the equation, t times of two minus three five gives us t times of five alpha one minus eight alpha two plus Five and for three. On further, we introduce t inside the bracket to so find t times five times of t alpha one, a times of t alpha two, and five times of t alpha three. As we, as the value of t alpha one is already given in the question, t alpha one is given by one zero. So we simply simply substitute the value for t alpha one, one zero. Value of t alpha two is already known to us because it is given in the question two minus one, so two minus one, and t alpha three is given as four three, so we put the value of four comma three. Now this becomes five comma zero first, and sixteen comma minus eight, and twenty comma fifteen. Now we just simplify all the three vectors, and finally we observe nine comma twenty three. So this is our desired uh, resulting two-dimensional vector nine comma two twenty three, which is the value of this uh, vector two minus three five under the image of t. So t of two comma minus three five is given by nine comma twenty three. Now the next problem. If alpha, beta, and gamma are linearly independent, are linearly independent vectors, then show that alpha plus beta. Beta plus gamma, gamma plus alpha are also 
linearly independent. In the question, it is given that three vectors, alpha, beta, gamma, are linearly independent vectors. Then show that alpha plus beta, beta plus gamma, and gamma plus alpha are also linearly independent. Here we use the definition of linearly independent. According to the definition of linearly independent set of vectors, we choose number of scalar according to the number of vectors from our field, and we multiply each vector with the vector, uh, each scalar with the vector, and finally we put their linear combination equal to zero. And if if we conclude with all scalars are zero, then the set of vectors are said to be linearly independent. So, in order to prove these three vectors, which are basically a consecutive sum of three vectors, alpha, beta, gamma, that is alpha plus beta, beta plus gamma, and gamma plus alpha. So, in order to prove these three vectors, alpha plus beta, beta plus gamma, and gamma plus alpha are linearly independent, we choose three scalar belongs to our field. So, let a, B, and C are scalars belongs to field A times of alpha plus beta plus B times of beta plus gamma and C times of gamma plus alpha is equal to zero. This is our initial assumption that the linear combination of three scalars A, B, C, which we choose arbitrarily from our field, and these three vectors, which are consecutive sum of three vectors alpha, beta, gamma, is equal to the zero vector. Now, in order to prove these three vectors are linearly independent, we have to prove these three scalars are individually zero. If all three scalars are individually zero, then the set of vectors become linearly independent. So, let us simplify the expression like A alpha. We just introduce the scalar inside the bracket. So A alpha plus A beta plus B beta plus B gamma plus C gamma plus C alpha is equal to 0 alpha. Now we choose alpha as a common because the, there are two terms which includes alpha. So we simply choose alpha as a common, the remaining is just A plus C. In these two terms we have alpha, so we choose alpha as a common. And these two terms includes beta, so a plus b beta, and finally we have b plus c gamma. So we choose alpha, beta, gamma as a common because they lie in the uh, pair of terms, and finally we get this expression a plus c, which is sum of two scalar, is again another scalar, a plus b, b plus c, these are the scalar coefficients of all three vectors alpha, beta, gamma. And according to our question, because in the question it is given that alpha, beta, gamma are linearly independent. This shows if we choose three scalars which belongs to field and we put them in a linear combination with these three vector alpha, beta, gamma is equal to zero vector. Then clearly all three scalar coefficients of alpha, beta, gamma must be zero. So with this assumption, a plus c must be zero, a plus b is equal to zero and b plus c is equal to zero as alpha, beta and gamma are linearly independent set of vectors. That's why we put their scalar coefficients equal to zero. This is all due to the definition of linearly independent vectors. So if a plus c is zero, a plus b is zero and b plus c is zero, if we simplify further these three equations for a, b, c, finally we get a, b and c, all three are individually zero. Whether you simplify by the substitution method or using simultaneous two equations, finally we observe A, B, and C. All three scalars are zero. And because all scalars are zero, that's why this equation number one, suppose this is equation one, and this is equation number second. So from equation one, it is clear that if all scalars are zero, which we put in the linear combination with three consecutive sum of alpha, beta, gamma vectors, so this implies alpha plus beta, beta plus gamma, and gamma plus alpha are also linearly independent.
Now the next question, question number fifth. If alpha, beta, gamma are linearly independent set of vectors, then we have to prove alpha plus beta, alpha minus beta, and alpha minus twice beta plus gamma are linearly are also linearly independent. We proceed in the similar manner like in previous problem. We start with the assumption that these three vector, which we have to prove that these are linearly independent. So we have three vector quantities. So we choose three scalars from this field. So let A, B, C are any three scalars. Are any three scalars? A time of alpha plus beta plus B time of alpha minus beta plus C times of alpha minus two beta plus gamma is equal to zero vector. Now we simplify the expression a alpha plus a beta plus b alpha minus b beta plus c alpha minus 2c beta plus c gamma equal to 0 vector. Now we choose alpha as a common if alpha lying in more than one terms like here we have a alpha, b alpha and c alpha. So if we choose a minus of a plus b plus c alpha. We choose alpha as a common from three terms and we will observe a plus b plus c as a coefficient of alpha. For beta we have a minus b and minus of 2c uh, minus of 2c as a coefficient of beta. For gamma we have just one term c gamma. So these are the coefficients of alpha, beta and gamma. And according to question, alpha, beta, gamma are linearly independent factors. So their scalar coefficient must be 0. So a plus b plus c is equal to 0 and a minus b minus 2c is equal to 0 and finally c is equal to 0. As alpha, beta and gamma are linearly independent set of factors. That's why we put all the scalar coefficient of these three vectors equal to 0. This is all due to the definition of linearly independent set of factors. And now we simplify these three equations for A, B, C in order to evaluate the value of A, A B, and C. As C is equal to 0, we simply put uh, C equal to 0 in both the equations. So first equation reduced to A plus B equal to 0. In second equation, if we put C equal to 0, we find A minus B equal to 0. And C is already 0. So, if you simplify these two equations, you find 2a is equal to 0, so a equal to 0. If a and c are 0, if you put a and c equal to 0 in the first equation, here you get b equal to 0. So, as all three scalars, a, b, and c, are individually 0, and this shows that these three vectors, alpha plus beta, alpha minus beta, and alpha minus 2 beta plus gamma, are clearly linearly independent because we assume three scalar a, b, c in the linear combination of these three vectors and we put them equal to zero vector and finally we compute all scalars are zero and whenever all scalars are zero the set of vectors become linearly independent so alpha plus beta alpha minus beta and alpha minus two beta plus gamma are linearly independent set of vectors thank you